So Joe Martin is a Crop Protection Senior Scientist with AHDB and he has responsibilities for the EMU programme and he's lead on the Septipra Plus and Amber. He previously had responsibilities for weeds across all crops with a strategic aim of creating resilient IPM systems decreasingly reliant on pesticides and helping to boost the competitiveness and sustainability of the industry. Okay, thanks. Over to you, Joe. Thanks, Nicola. Um, morning, everybody. Um, I hope you can all see my slides. Um, what I'm going to try and give you today is a bit of an update on the Scepter Plus programme where we um, aim to um, plug some of the gaps that our horticultural growers are finding in terms of crop protection. Um, and I'm going to focus particularly on, on the weed work that's been um, conducted over the four years. Just um, as an as, as a, um, introduction as well, I'd like to introduce the EMU team at AHDB. So um, I now lead on that um, area of work as well as SEPTA Plus. And my colleagues, Joe McTighe and Adam Doxford also um, spend a lot of time within this area. And our aim is to um, gain minor use approvals or EMUs um, for um, a whole range of different crops. Um, I've got responsibilities for a lot of the veg crops. Um, Joe looks after ornamentals and protected edibles. And Adam looks after soft fruit and tree fruit and some of the um, uh, slightly um, obscure um, veg crops, if you like, as, as well. In terms of Scepter Plus, so this is, has been a four year program. Um, we are now um, coming to the end of the uh, final year. And you can see there from the um, infographics, the, the number of products that we have evaluated, um, the number of targets and different crops that we've looked at across the four years and the amount of investment that we've um, put in. And we've also had um, quite a, um, a large input from crop protection companies. You can see over 34 have contributed um, in kind or financially to help um, allow us to do more um, trials and cover more priority areas as, as the uh, four years has um, progressed. You can see um, on the next slide the number of emus that we've had come out um, the um, results that we gathered in terms of crop selectivity or efficacy within the SEPTA Plus program. We then um, moved on to work with the manufacturers to gain those approvals um, across a number of different crops and you'll see that there's quite a lot of herbicides um, in there because the the program was front loaded if you like with a lot of weed control um, trials because there was quite a large need initially um, to, to focus on that area and this work carries on so these are the number of products that we've currently got where we've either got um, applications submitted with CRD or we're working with the manufacturer with um, label approvals or we're generating residue data ourselves and in conjunction with manufacturers to allow us to get those applications in in coming years and there's more products um, behind this um, where we're looking and waiting often for renewal to come through before we can um, progress them um, as well so quite a number of um, positive outcomes from the from the different trials um, that we've been um, working on. In terms of the, the weed work over the four years, um, this um, gives an overview of that. Um, and yeah, quite a large number of trials within field vegetable areas from brassicas um, all the way down to sort of herbs, sweet corn, asparagus. And um, we've been looking at weed control in ornamentals, particularly um, in narcissus and also thinking about herbicides and growing media um, and, and how that they interact. We've looked at um, soft fruit, so we've been looking at uh, weed control in blackcurrant, in rhubarb, and also uh, this year, which I'll show you um, a little bit later, is been looking at some weed control options in new plantations for, um, for orchards. And these are the specific um, trials um, that where I've got some results, which the researchers kindly put together some summary slides for me. And, and I'll sort of quickly whiz through each one so you get an idea of where they're up to um, and, and the, the work that's, that's been carrying on. We've been really lucky this year um, with the weed control work and that none of it um, had to stop due to COVID. We did um, have, have to pause some of the 
uh, disease and insect work because some of the research stations weren't able to um, stay open um, during the summer months. But yeah, for the weed control work, it's, it's great that researchers were able to um, carry on. So we start with the first one. So um, looking at um, drilled pumpkin. So Angela Huckle and the, the team at ADAS have been um, looking at this um, project. Um, and what we did was um, we carried out some work back in 2018 and we took forward those most promising products. Um, so this year um, we didn't see any phyto in either the pre-emergence or post-emergence trials. Um, and you can see from the picture um, where there was some clomazone used um, in, in mix with, with a coded product. So you'll see that um, there's quite a few codes um, in the presentation and this is to allow um, the manufacturers to submit products um, and allows us to compare against other products and, and it means that they're really keen to, to sort of put those products into the, the process. We uncode as fast as we can um, and as soon as manufacturers allow us to do so. The next project is uh, Brassicas um, and uh, Angela and the team and the um, Alleyman Brassica Centre have been working on um, the Brassica trials for the last few years. Um, and we've got several actives in there where we're um, quite keen to pursue and we're working really closely with um, a couple of the manufacturers in how we can actually move those forward. And certainly next year, um, the plan is to do some uh, residue data generation, um, which will help us get those applications in and then a, a use out for the grower. We have found differences um, with the different types of brassicas. Um, so um, things like kale, um, we have seen some um, slight distortion in, in some cases um, and also we've had issues uh, in terms of sprouts as well as you can see. But generally um, some really good products um, that we think will be uh, really useful for the future. We control in left baby leaf, one of the big um, concerns for growers there is uh, contamination of crops. So, um, weeds such as ground soil can cause um, whole crop rejection, um, which is a, um, a big problem. So there were two types of trials this year. We did um, a whole head lettuce, um, which was carried out by uh, David Norman. And then we had a whole series of grower led trials on uh, baby leaf spinach. And we looked at, gave us um, a whole range of nice different data from different growing conditions, different soil types, different areas of the country as well. So. Um, really useful to get an understanding how some of those um, products might work. And you can see here there's a couple of um, uh, actives where we think um, will look promising. So the, the, this is the, the grower trial um, and yeah as you can see here so we had 11 trials completed um, by nine growers. One of the big challenges, not so much weed control, but is damping off. And, and we've certainly seen that with um, the loss of seed treatments, which um, is proving particularly challenging at the moment for, me for many growers. Volunteer potatoes in carrots and parsnips. So this has been work that's been going on for quite a few years. And um, we've really struggled to find something or a product that will um, be effective um, and, and give useful control because obviously it's not just the, the carrots that can be affected, then we can have issues with um, blight for, uh, and virus um, control as well for actual potato crops. So it's really important that we, that we sort of get a hold on, on, on this area um, of control. And there has been a product that we think um, has performed quite well. Um, and, and again, we'll, we'll be moving forward with that, hopefully with the manufacturer um, as, as the, the results come in this year. We control in asparagus. So this is one of the first trials I managed to get out and look at this year once we um, came out of lockdown. Um, and this site um, had massive problems with uh, fumitry at this particular farm. Um, and we were really lucky that we managed to get um, an application in for artists and it came out in time um, and it's shown some really good levels of control. There's another couple of other products in there um, which we think will be um, useful um, and um, obviously the sort of residuals and um, we're hoping we'll get better efficacy in a wetter spring. It was really dry when we looked at this site so they, some of the residuals were, were struggling a bit to, to give some decent levels of control. 
And then moving on to ornamentals or um, cut flowers. So these are Sweet William trials um, that we um, ADAS conducted in uh, this year. And you can see there, there's a number of products um, that were looked at. Um, and this graph just illustrates the um, level of emergence um, from, um, from um, those treatments. And you've got the untreated on the left there, so you can see. Um, so some of the products are giving um, no impact on on the um, emergence of the the crop, and obviously there's the that one in the middle there that's having quite a significant effect. So getting the understanding, especially in in sort of cut flowers and very minor crops, and an understanding of the selectivity of um, weed control products is, has been really key. And then the final one is in the um, young tree establishment for orchards. Um, and they've had quite a um, severe loss of actives um, as a lot of um, horticultural crops have had. But this year we looked at uh, a residual trial and a contact herbicide trial. Um, and I'm just gonna go through the uh, residual trial here. So this was a site over in Gloucestershire um, and we had five residual herbicide treatments um, application was back in early April and this was again was a, a trial that um, ADAS conducted for us and you can see there the, the treatments that, um, that were looked at. Unsurprisingly um, no phyto seen at the site, um, we don't normally expect to see much phyto um, in, the, in this sort of growing condition um, and some really nice um, differences um, in levels of control as you can see here from this graph and in terms of the longevity of that control um, was, was maintained as well. And there's just a couple of pictures there so you can understand the, the weed burden that was there at the site um, and in terms of the level of control still being maintained by the, the Stomp and Flexidor um, in this photo on the left. So if you want more information, um, please um, have a delve into our um, website. The link is there at the top um, and there's trial reports uh, on there for all of the um, work that was, has been conducted for the last three years. The reports are coming in at the moment for year four um, and they will go on um, as soon as we um, publish them. So have a, have a look and um, get in touch if you um, have more questions. Um, and there's all sorts of um, other things about the trials um, that you can find. In terms of the future and looking ahead for the um, SEPTA Plus program, so it's due to finish in April 21. Um, those of you that may have been involved, the AMBA program, which looks at biopesticide use, um, is due to finish in December 20, so um, at the end of this month. And because of the COVID um, delay, what we're proposing um, at the moment is to have um, an extension of up to a year and we're, we're currently evaluating that to allow us to catch up and to complete the priorities and work that was that was planned. SEPTA Plus and AMBER have quite complementary um, work patterns um, and some really good links between the two projects have been um, developed. And we're currently looking at what we might want to do from uh, April 2022 um, for food work because we still see there being um, importance in, in this type of work um, for horticulture. Um, so therefore the thought is that we will link those two programs together and there will be quite a big focus on terms of bioprotectant products as we see far more of those coming through the regulatory process now than we do conventionals and with a bigger focus obviously on IPM. So that initial planning has begun um, and I'm sure there'll be more detail coming through uh, for the future. So thank you very much um, and any questions?